Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm Jody Collier. And I'm Andrew Cotton. Andrew's with a company called Nuco, a century company. It's a gas piping distribution, so he welds a lot of API code downhill 6010 pipe. There's a new thing coming down the pike, uphill 7016 low hydrogen route. And we're going to be working on that today. Thanks to Nuco for letting him come and work with me. Let's do it. Let's get it. Once again, these are practice plates leading up to pipe. 30 degree bevel, we're going to put a 1 16th land on this thing. Also, we want to gap it about 3 30 seconds of an inch. So the tacks have to be made using the same rod, 70 16, low hydrogen. 3 30 second gap, that's critical. Also, don't want to have any high low. High low means mismatch. All right, we've put it up on about a 45 degree, it's sort of a hybrid overhead vertical. And it's 70 amps on the machine, DC EP. You can run this rod either way, but the procedure that Andrew has to work with is, is calling for DC electrode positive. Rod actually runs a little bit better on electrode negative in, in most people's opinion. So we're creeping up on that feathered tack, and you can see it kind of looks just uh, kind of melted away about an eighth of a, or a quarter of an inch almost from, from the very end. And that's important because almost every one of these feathered tacks you'll see in this video has a little crater eye in it. A little bit later, you'll see that really plainly. Now, I want to show this. This is this is how far the the end of the restart here is heating up. It takes it that long to heat up, and then finally, boom, it pushes through, and that's that's the way you get a good restart. Now, we'll show that in just a minute. That's a, that was a good restart. It's very easy not to get a restart if you hang around, you know, not long enough or too long. You're going to have a little difference in the reinforcement on the backside. You'll figure that out with practice. This video is trying to give you as many hints as possible to save you a little time on your practice, but it is going to take practice to get this route passed down with 7016. All right, the progression here is pretty slow compared to 6010. You just have to live with that. This looks like a little snail volcano crawling along. It's really pretty slow, but you just you can't whip in and out of that puddle like you can with a 6010 or travel fast. It's just a slow progression. That's just how it is. All right, let's chip that off now and see how Andrew did. What tie-in? Before we get into the rest of the video, the rest of the arc shots and the tying into the tacks and things like that, so Andrew, could you tell us what's going on in the industry, the piping industry that you're in that's requiring the use of this rod for open root pipe? Well, number one, the customer that we service wants us to use this new procedure that they came out with for a 7016 low hydrogen open root and hut pass and then 7018 fill and cap passes. All of that boils down to what are we using for material? It always comes back to is it a stronger material X60 and above? So by using this lower hydrogen electrode it's going to solve a couple issues. One of those is going to be a better chemistry match and then the other one is just going to be all around you won't have to worry about something called hydrogen induced cracking. Let's boil down real quickly let's boil down the bullet points before we get into the rest of the video. Um, all right, let's talk about amperage real quick. So for amperage, you have to look at what the uh, consumer catalog says for the range of amperage, but then you have to look at what the actual customer wants in their, they have in their procedure and what they want done on the pipe. As you see in the video, we're gonna be running right about 70 amps on DC electrode positive. So that's gonna be your stinger hooked up to the positive side of your machine. So you have to make sure that the customer okays that polarity with that amperage. So your procedure that you're having to run to calls for EP. Yes. However, it runs a little bit better, in your opinion, on EN. A little easier. The consumable catalog, Lincoln's consumable catalog, actually calls out recommendations for running that electrode on DC electrode negative, meaning that your stinger would be hooked up to the negative pole of your machine. Okay. So then, then uh, so, so your amperage has got to be within the procedure. Yep. Uh, Fit-up's got to be good. Fit-up's very important with this electrode because, I'm going to say this over and over again, it is not 6010 downhill or cellulosic downhill electrode. It doesn't have that same punch. So you have to make sure that your fit-up is, is fairly decent. You can't really cheat it on those tighter gaps. Mostly it's the tighter gaps that you come across the issues with. The wider gaps you can hang back in the puddle a little bit, ride it, let, it clo let that keyhole close up, and then progress on. Rod angle. Rod angles, again, very, very important. All these things are very finicky with the low hydrogen electrode process. 
because the rod angle is going to determine how cold or how hot the puddle is. One more thing that you'll see is key, if you've already not seen it in the video, is feathering the tacks much further back than you will on 6010. Absolutely. Feathering the tacks to get a nice even transition on your tack so you don't have nice, you know, nice 116th reinforcement on the inside and then down to flat and then up again to 116th and then down to flat. You get a much more even transition when you really feather those tacks back before you start your next weld. All right, let's get back to the welding. <laughs> All right, this is where we left off. Just as a reminder, every restart and whether whether you're you're going from or going to, every tie-in needs to be feathered back like this. Tacks on both sides of the tacks and on all restarts. Just it's just necessary to burn out the crater hole. Here's the rod angle again. The, the machine is reading 73. We had it set on 70. That kind of changes a little bit, it seems, from arc length. But as long as it's close, it should be okay. All right, let's look at that last restart. And when we start here, this is going to really illustrate the need for grinding. You can see that crater hole plain as day right in there. And if you hadn't feathered that, it would just be in there. It would show up on x-ray. And then you would have to either go in there and repair it, or someone else might have to go in there and repair it. Might even have to dig up a hole. It just costs money, and you want to get the x-ray right on the first time. And the way to do that is feather those restarts and feather those tacks. All right, Andrew, what's going on right here? So as I'm coming up to my final tack on the plate, I'm going to try to keep that rod really poking through there all the way through until all the fire is coming out back at me. On the pipe, you're going to have longer tacks, so this is going to be a longer run. Key point, make sure you have enough rod to go into that tack so you're not stopping prematurely and possibly causing a crater inside of the root, inside of the pipe. The root's not going to look good on the, on the outside. You're going to have to grind it. In fact, the procedure that Andrew's working with calls for grinding the root pass slick. Main thing is to get the right contour on the inside, the right reinforcement, no suck back places, and no lack of fusion or lack of penetration. All right, well, that's the root pass, and that's all there's going to be for this video. We'll do the hot and the fill and the cap in, a, in another video. We're going, to, we're going to move on to pipe, an open root pipe, 12 inch pipe with this same rod. And so uh, that'll be coming up soon. See you next time.